first thing we're going to do when we do some of the strength training for women is I go through some of the myth versus facts. All right, what I want you to understand is some of the things that you'll hear are a myth. And then how can we make that into, you know, make a fact rather than a myth. So one of the big things that people will hear is, will I get bulky with strength training? Or can I spot reduce the fat? Another one is cardio is the only thing to help me lose weight. Eating less will help me lose weight. Older women should not strength train. All right, so all of those, every single one is a myth. Each and every single one. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to eating less, it depends on how much you're eating in the first place. If you're not eating enough to begin with and then you cut back, it's actually detrimental than if you're eating too much and you cut back a little bit. So facts of strength training. So the facts include, no, you are not going to get bulky with strength training. And a big reason for that, testosterone. All right, women have a very, very, very small amount of testosterone in their bodies. All right, uh, we have much lower amounts, but it's just enough. Okay, we also have a lower percentage of type 2 muscle fibers. And what the type 2 muscle fiber does is that is what helps to be more the fast twitch, the power muscle. All right, the type 1 muscle fiber is more the endurance muscle. So when you're running long distance, that's a type 1. When you're doing quick sprints, power activities, that's the type 2 muscle fiber. So that's kind of the difference there. Without getting into the science and mitochondrial level of it. All right. Also too is we have a lower muscle mass compared to our male counterparts, especially in the upper body, primarily due to anatomy. All right. Just the way the women's bodies developed versus the male bodies developed. Men have more muscle, especially in the upper back, shoulders, chest. All right, we can get muscle in the back and shoulders, absolutely. And pectoral muscles, absolutely. All right, <clears throat> but we're not gonna get the extreme amount that we would see with our male counterparts unless there is some other form of training or other supplements up used. All right, and in some cases there's a genetic abnormality. Okay, then with the proper progression in the strength training helps to yield the results that most people are looking for. So proper progression meaning something along the lines of, you know, what's going to work for each individual, having something different per individual. All right, so we always tell people start off with your basics, one to two sets, eight to ten reps, no more than 12 to 15 reps at a time. All right, you go into further that, further than 15, then you're doing more endurance training versus some strength training. All right, so the facts of strength training. If you want to spot reduce fat. All right, this one is, if this was possible, it would be happening. However, our body is gonna take wherever you have anything stored at. All right, so if it's stored, you know, up in the shoulders, and you're trying to reduce in the legs. It's just gonna store it wherever. You know, unfortunately, we're not gonna, you know, doing sit-ups, crunches, stuff like that. You're gonna develop the muscle, but the fat's still gonna be there in the midsection. All right, so the biggest part of this is diet. What you bring into your body versus what you're doing to help improve your overall health. All right, so, Main thing here is diet, strength training, cardio activity. All work together to help improve your overall health. The one thing you cannot fight is genetics. All right, sorry. That's one thing we just can't handle, you can't deal with is genetics there. But, yes, absolutely, absolutely. There's something to be said about that. So, now, but what we can do is mo make modifications, make suggestions, refer you out to a proper dietitian, and help with the strength training and a proper exercise program. That's where we can help. All right, cardio is the only thing to help me lose weight. Some people. Okay, now here's the thing. Cardio is great. However, one of the main drawbacks with the cardio 
is the calorie burn, the long-term effects of the calorie burn from cardio. The reason why I say that, all right? So when you're doing a calorie burn, what that means is how many calories you're burning when the session is done, okay? So after cardio, usually within about 35, 40 minutes or so, that calorie burn is done after cardio. Now with strength training, that calorie burn can last upwards of 36 hours. So that's because your body is still recovering from that strength training workout. So say you burned less calories in a session in that strength training workout than you did in the cardio workout. However, after a certain period of time, that's done with for cardio. Your body is still recovering for 36 hours, still utilizing those calories still burning calories, still rebuilding that muscle. So you're gonna have a longer duration of the calorie burn. That's what that means, okay? So now, keep in mind, just sitting, just at rest, your body requires six to 10 calories a day just to maintain itself for one pound of muscle. So if your body frame, your frame, all right, say you have lean mass, say, you know, depending upon what your weight is, a certain percentage of that, so let's go with like 20% body fat. So the rest of it's lean mass on your body. Six to 10 calories per pound of muscle at rest a day. So that's where we get some of that resting caloric intake, It's just to maintain. All right, eating less will help me lose weight. All right, now, in the short term, especially when we always hear for wedding season, prom season, homecoming, formals, people are always wanting to look good in their outfits, okay? What's the first thing they do? They go into self-starvation mode, eat less. Well, that's fine for a brief period of time. However, the long duration of that is actually a negative on your body. The reason why it's a negative is your body now goes into this hibernation storage, self-storage mode. All right, so our bodies are still wired that from caveman era, hunters gatherers, okay? Where food could be scarce at times. What happens when food's scarce at times? We hold on to everything we bring in. So if we're holding on to everything that we're bringing in, and then you're trying to eat less, your body's just like, okay, you're bringing in less food. I'm not gonna release as much energy that you need. I'm gonna sit here and kinda release what you need here. I'm gonna release a little bit over here. But I'm holding all this in as much as I can. So kinda like a chipmunk or a squirrel hoarding. It's kinda what our bodies do at times. So when you're eating less, Think of a chipmunk or squirrel when they're hoarding everything. That's how your body is. All right, the biggest, another one that I always hear. Older women should not strength train. Now, this is the furthest thing from the truth as we can get. I was gonna say, what is older? <laughs> Usually postmenopausal women. Postmenopausal women should not strength train. So that way I'm not putting an age on it. So, all right, so the reason why I say this is so far from the truth because the further we get from that menopausal state, the more we need this from the standpoint of osteoporosis prevention. The other thing too is it keeps our muscles going, keeps the energy moving because we need to do as much as we can to keep that going when the body itself is lacking the hormones to help metabolize and help keeping everything moving. So you gotta put more work in to keep it going. That's where part of that comes in. The biggest exam, and the other thing too is what this also helps with, as we age, our balance kinda shifts, flexibility decreases, bone density decreases, muscle mass decreases. Okay, so we gotta keep all that going to keep ourselves healthy, all right? Because then that keeps all the fluids moving in your body. Lean mass makes you healthier, 
gives you more energy. And the other thing too is it helps promote greater recovery. All right, so, and especially certain areas, certain women are more prone to osteoporosis than other women. All right, and that's one of the biggest things. So osteopenia, we can work with and try to reverse. Osteoporosis, we can't reverse osteoporosis. We can slow down a little bit, but we can't reverse it. All right, so when someone is just diagnosed with osteopenia and they're like at minus one, minus 1.2, we're okay with that. We can still get you in a plus side for your bone density scans. But when you get down closer to minus two, then you're getting into the osteoporosis range. Okay, so that's where we gotta make sure for that bone density where that's at. And that's why load bearing activities, strength training is so important for that. Okay, a huge example that we have here, so when I hear people tell me they can't do something, read into this example that we have. This is an actual person in the fitness center, and she's been with us for about eight months now. An 84-year-old 84 woman with both knees replaced, missing part of a heel, missing an eye, horrible balance, overall strength improvements on a daily basis because of what she's doing. Because we're having her doing some modifications to her squats, sit, stand, stuff like that to start with. All right, she's walking without assistance now. We would always use a walker or a cane. Doesn't require any of that now. So before anybody comes in and tells me they can't do this, Think about having an 84-year-old woman doing some of this stuff. And her health is improving. So the other thing to take away from this is to understand that it's never too late. The only time it's too late is when you're under the ground. So keep that in mind. Now, the health benefits of strength training. Diabetes, high blood pressure risk is reduced. Now, someone that's a type 1 diabetic and their blood sugar levels run high, so does their, high, their blood pressure. They go hand in hand with each other because of the system that's engaged with it, okay? It helps control blood sugar levels, glucose from the bloodstream to the muscles, all right? The muscle needs that to be, to metabolize with ATP production, which is kind of the energy production for our bodies, all right? The lean muscle, helps to make body more sensitive to the effects of insulin, all right? <clears throat> Diabetes risks increase for high blood pressure and cardiovascular disease, all right? So the reduced risk of developing osteoporosis, that's another benefit. Improve overall health and body mechanics. Have your body move properly, all right? Being able to walk with ease, being able to sit up and you know, get up and sit down, no problem. Overall metabolic health, so that includes understanding what your numbers are, all right? So overall triglycerides, uh, diabetics, your blood sugar levels, blood pressure levels, everything is all can be improved with some type of exercise. All right, so next thing from there, how do we strength train? Okay, always make sure you get a good warm up in, five to 10 minutes. From there, learn the equipment and exercises properly. So wherever you're at, whether you're with us or at another facility, take the time to learn what you are doing first. All right, don't just think you can read it and understand. In some cases, there's multiple things to set up and if you feel off, there's probably something off on that equipment. Okay, so understanding how it works properly. Learn the proper lifting mechanics. If you're not using the equipment, but you're doing more of the body weight, how do you lift properly? Where should your hips be? Where should your knees be? All right, where should your body be positioned? Okay, so everybody's center of gravity is gonna be slightly different. Keep that in mind. All right, always begin slow. Gradually add in more weights and change up routines when it is needed. Okay, so don't just rush right into doing something, get yourself so sore, you don't wanna do this again. 
Okay, there's a right way and the wrong way of doing it. So what we try to do with people is try to make sure you're gonna have some soreness, that's normal. But understanding that that little bit of soreness or a little bit of discomfort is completely normal versus having soreness to a point where you don't, you can't even move. All right, then you know you've done too much. All right, understand within the first four weeks is normally a learning curve in any type of a routine. The reason why I say that because it takes your body time to adapt to any type of a routine you do. So when you're doing the first four weeks of that, understanding that, okay, we're gonna see some increases in your strength. That's normal. You're gonna see changes in that weight. That's normal. In a lot of cases, what's gonna happen too is you get and step up on that scale after like three weeks of strength training, you see that weight number increase. That's normal. All right, reason why I'm saying that's normal. Every pound of muscle versus a pound of fat, still is a pound. You are gonna start to increase in strength before the fat comes off. Does that make sense? Okay, so you're gonna see some of that increase in strength first. After four to eight weeks, that's when you're gonna to start to see kind of a little more of a stabilization within your own physiological makeup, okay? So then, and that's why so many women get so frustrated within three to four weeks thinking that they're not losing all this weight that they are hoping to lose. Now, what I want you to think about is how much have you improved? How much strength have you improved here? What are you lifting over here? What does your posture look like? How are you moving as you're walking? Are you walking a little bit quicker? Those are all things to think about, all right? Do you, are you pain free? Are you starting to become pain free when you're doing your movements? Do your joints still ache or do your joints feel better? So those are all some other things there. Begin with a total body exercise, all right? So a total body routine means doing upper body and lower body when you're first starting out because you're only doing like one to two sets and at most eight to 10 reps per set, okay? So you're easy to go through a half hour full body at that point when you're just starting out. After that, your body adapts, then we kind of make changes to it, all right? So then we'll say, okay, your body's getting used to this, so let's change up this routine. Let's have you do upper body this day, lower body this day. Or let's mix up a little bit of upper body here and lower body, opposite upper body, lower body. So we can do the front part and the back part. All different things there. Change up routines on a regular basis, so that way your body does not grow stale and stagnant in that routine. And then you see nothing. You don't see any improvements after that. All right, then once you're done with your workout, always, always, always cool down and stretch afterwards, okay? I notice how I do not have stretching before. Your body needs some of the tightness within the joints for stabilization, okay? You overstretch it, so you're going into doing a squat, you overstretch the back, overstretch the hips, you lose that stability. So you need to make sure you have that stabilization. All right, if you're interested, don't know where to start. All right, figure out what will work for you first. Yeah, I'd love for everybody to come and see us, but understanding what is realistic, figure out what's realistic for you and go from there. All right, if you're interested in working out on campus, schedule a time to meet with Joel or myself. We're always having people coming in, even if they can only do a month to start with, and come in, meet with us, get a better understanding of what they're supposed to do, and then they can take that elsewhere. That's not an issue. We just want to make sure that what you're doing, you're doing it safely and beneficial for yourself. All right, we will help set up any type of a program that you're looking at, all right? A lot of people think, okay, strength training, that means I'm gonna be doing bench press, heavy weights. Not really. We still want you to lift weights, absolutely. But it's gonna be based upon what you're able to do. So we make the routine work for you, not you forced into doing a routine. Does that make sense? Because one of the things that a lot of people will try to do is say, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this. There's no modification. We gotta make sure it works for the individual. 
not the individual working for this. All right, so keep in mind what is important. All right, if you have any health conditions, make sure you have a physician referral form in place first. Reason why I say this, certain medications affects your exercise. Just like your exercise can affect certain medications. All right, one of the things that comes to mind, beta blockers for heart disease. What that does, that keeps the heart rate steady. There is no increase in that heart rate. So when you're pushing yourself, you're moving yourself, you're gonna fatigue, but your heart rate's not changing. That's important to understand because then what can happen is people get so tired, they keep pushing, they keep pushing, keep pushing, they can pass out, okay? The other thing, any type of heart-related medication, high blood pressure medication, cholesterol-related medication, statins, diabetics, insulin, all affected by exercise. And they can also affect the quality of exercise you do, okay? So that's why it's important for the doctor to know what's going on. Not to say over the physician referral form, is that a form you have there? Mm -hmm. We do. Online. We do. It, it is online, yes. All right. Understand that even with restrictions in place, modifications can and will be made to accommodate. So we've had numerous people coming in with different types of restrictions in place. Someone is coming in after they've had a hip replacement. Six months down the road, they come in and work out. One of the major restrictions in place, not to go past 90 degree flexion in the hip. Okay, that's easy enough. Do everything else, we'll make a modification to the rower, if you want to do the rower. So that way your feet are not up, instead your feet are down, hip is, does not go past 90. All right, so you're not going past that 90 for any type of flexion at that point. So that's one of the major things to be aware of. Knee replacements, full range of flexibility, you probably lose the last 15, 20 degrees as far as that whole flexi you know, flexion is concerned within the knee. It's okay, we'll work with that, but I still want you to do something, okay? The goal is to make the workout work for you. That's the number one goal right there. How can we make this work for you, the individual? Not you fitting the workout. And that's where some of the other, play you know, some of the other videos come into play. You're always trying to fit what that routine is. We try to make sure that you are the important one. How can we make the workouts help you? All right, learn the proper form and technique first to reduce any risk of injury, okay? Anything else that needs to be addressed? Figure out what your goal is and move forward. So everybody's gonna have their own goals. Everyone's unique, okay? Not everybody has the same goal. Okay, I wanna lose 10 pounds by the end of summer, okay? Some people are like, okay, I want to increase my strength. Great, how can we do that? Where do we do that? Where do we start? Okay. Understand there are numerous ways to incorporate strength training into your daily routine. Basic one, body weight training first, incorporate bands, go into weights. Okay. Work within your abilities and understand the difference between soreness from moving versus overdoing and pain and overdoing it. Okay, so like I explained earlier, when you go, you've never done squats before, you go in doing a light workout with some type of squat routine, you're gonna have some soreness. That's normal, that's unavoidable. But the important thing there is to understand the difference between extreme pain and slight soreness. Slight soreness, you can move through, recover from. Extreme pain is saying something's wrong. There's a difference. Okay, and that's why I'm always trying to make sure, and I always reiterate with people, what is it that you're feeling? Well, I feel a little bit of pain. Is it pain, discomfort, soreness? All three are different. So we try to go through and work through it. Can you do this? Can you move? Yes. Okay, how does it feel when you're moving? It feels better. Okay, let's keep doing that. We're getting rid of that soreness then. Communicate with the appropriate people on what you're feeling and making sure that modifications can be made. All right, so when we're doing something, sometimes it may seem like you're doing it right. 
especially when it comes to doing a squat. Okay, so and I don't have people coming down into a full deep squat movement, okay? I don't expect that. Sit down, stand up, basic movement right there. Do that first, add weight, then do it where you're just doing without anything to balance, okay? But getting yourself in a proper form and technique. All right, so some of the exercises that can be done. Machine weights, free weights, body weights, bands. All beneficial for your overall well-being. Make changes, modifications as needed. Strength training benefits of it, okay? Improve your posture, back health, bone health. All huge benefits. Improve balance issues, decrease risks of falling. Not always doing squats, bench press with extreme weight. Sometimes just doing your own body weight in some movements. Still benefit. At your desk, sit down, stand up 10 times. Doing stuff like that where you keep your arms in front of you here or out in front here so you're not wanting to hoist yourself down and up, okay? Find ways to do progress. So like I said, with sit, stand. Progress, sit, stand, performing, squat, appropriate depth. Okay, so as I said, sit, stand movement, arms in front of you. All right, I would say try and do it, but I don't like the fact that these are rolling chairs and I don't want them rolling away from you. Okay, so that's a safety issue there. You want a stationary chair, not a rolling office chair. All right, go into doing a goblet squat, holding a weight in front of you. You always want to hold it close to your chin, close to your chest, keeps the shoulders back, coming down, coming back up. So as you're doing that movement, and this is something that everybody can do on a regular basis, even holding books, still beneficial. Okay, bench press with the machine. So as we have our machines in a fitness center, you're sitting back, you're in an upright position, back on the rest, Kind of doing a bench press movement. Isolates the pectoral muscles. Go into a supine, laying down on your back. Pushing dumbbells before you even do the bar. Bars are 45 pounds. Dumbbells range anywhere from three pounds all the way up to 100 pounds. So find the weight that works for you. Otherwise doing bands. And I've gone over that last week with the bands. All right, so as I explained, bench press with the machine to the dumbbell. Okay, exercise modifications for overhead press. So one of the things you can do, single arm movement to doing both arms, okay? Doing a machine, sitting down, or sitting down in a chair bench, doing a single arm dumbbell with a back rest. The other thing is standing upright, no support. All progression. All right, so overhead press modifications. So what I've done, the far right just goes through the posterior side. So when you're looking at the back side of somebody, starting position to finish position, what the body is doing there in each part, okay? So that's with the 45 pound bar. So what you're seeing there is you're not seeing any deviation of the upper body. You see nice straight posture. All right, lat pull down, progressing to pull ups. All right, so lat pull down, great exercise for upper back. Helps with posture, helps maintain, all right? Reason why I'm always pounding down that posture. What happens when we're slouching? What's happening inside? We're putting pressure on our lungs, putting pressure on our heart, putting pressure on our organs. You're not getting a deep breath. You're not getting the oxygen flow that you need. Improve that posture you can breathe better, the heart works better, organs function better. All right, so that's why we're always pounding that posture. And with so many of us at a desk, what are we doing when we're at a desk? We're doing this, whereas we should be here, okay? So like I said, lat pull down, assisted pull-ups to doing unassisted pull-ups. That's all progression. And I'm always telling people, we should always be able to do at least one pull-up. At least one pull-up. Reason why I say that, if there's ever any time of an emergency of any sort, you need to get yourself up off of something, you gotta help yourself. I know it's an extreme case, 
but you never know sometimes. All right, but if you can just do at least one, and anybody can do it, okay? Deadlift, progress from doing a dumbbell, and there's different variations of a deadlift, okay? And one of the things I never do, I don't have you doing straight leg deadlift. You're always doing bent knees, okay? Protect the back, protect the legs. So you're seeing two variants there. Holding a bar here or holding a dumbbell like you're picking up from a box. Okay, keeping the weight close to you both times. Deadlift with a bar. Once you reach that 45 pounds to do the bar. But you're not doing that until you can safely demonstrate with the dumbbell. All right, now, Fitness Center Big Wheel page. Reason why I'm putting this up here, there are some women that are on this page of varying ages doing all sorts of different lifts. Kind of gives you some motivation there. Okay, so go ahead and check that out at some point. All right, any questions on this? I know I kind of went through the last part a little quickly, but running out of time. Questions, comments, concerns? Yes? Um, I'm sorry, we have one talking also. No, you're fine. The one here is surprised. Um, so if we came up, if, if we joined, mm -hmm. Um, whatever time frame we join, and we'd meet with you or Joel, mm -hmm. and so we would you'd start us out on something, and then would we meet with you like every... However see, often you need to. Progressing, because you have these progressions. Yes, it's based, each, each person is different, so it's based upon each individual. So I, assessing what the person's capable of doing yep. at their first visit? Yep. Yep, and that's where we do the intake, we do your evaluation, and we kind of go from there and figure out where you're starting at. From there, if you, and then what I always do with people is focus on one lift at a time. All right, get the form and technique down on one, then we move to the next one, move to the next one. You can schedule an appointment several times a week if you wanted to. What, what are the hours you're open again? 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday this summer, and come August, we're open on Fridays. So, all right, any other questions? Okay, you're welcome.